Let's and, do it. You want to sing the music for nope. it? Down no, now now now. That would be ridiculous. That's what we do. So uh, we left off at uh, the Gospel of St. Mark and some banter, and the banter feels a little bit forced because we're actually live at a Higher Things conference and there's people watching us. Right. It's and awkward. Normally when we are awkward, Hi. it's just us. Hi. Um, but uh, I don't know what's conference like so far. The conference is great. I'm liking it. I don't know. It's halfway through, right? Why'd you take your yellow headband off? Uh, I wanted to look professional. Why aren't you dressed like a pastor? Is this not <laughs> is this not professional? Like, I, I mean, it, professionalism I feel exists a little bit on a spectrum, though, don't you? Like, because well, like I could I could be in like a three piece suit, like, cause you have you seen the, the like the pastor shirts, but it's a white shirt, but it's a it's a black front, so you you get the French cuffs and right. That's professional. That is professional. It's very very nice. Or you could just get the the uh, the dicky that uh, yeah, and you put yeah. But like, I mean, you, do that. you got the the short sleeve. You have what? What are your socks? Socks are green. Professional, right? Hey, it's season of the church, my man. Got to oh, stay. Oh, I got out liturgical, liturgical. right? Yeah. <laughs> Belt buckle, everything. I don't want to. <laughs> All right, so, let's do it. Okay, fine. We left off in uh, the Gospel of St. Mark, uh, the 10th chapter. We're going to pick back up uh, where we stopped. Do you think we're going to finally finish a chapter? Chapter 10? Yeah, there's not much there. All right, so, so we, we should we, read yeah. it, I guess. Yeah, do you want to read it? I will pr- pronounce it. I'll sound it out. Do so it. Uh, beginning at verse 32, uh, they, being the disciples, were on the road going up to Jerusalem, and Jesus being Jesus, Jesus, uh, was walking ahead of them, and they were amazed, and those who followed were afraid. And taking the twelve again, Jesus began to tell them what was was to happen to him, saying, See, we are going up to Jerusalem, and the Son of Man will be delivered over to the chief priests and the scribes, and they will condemn him to death and deliver him over to the Gentiles, and they will mock him and spit on him and flog him and kill him. And after three days, he will rise." I didn't hear a word he said. Jesus, Jesus is going <laughs> to die on the cross and rise from the dead, but snacks are here, um, right. which is Looks better. Great. No, no, this is the third time. This is right? the third time, and like they still. How do you hear it three times and like come the crucifixion, not expect it? Well, I don't know if I mean that that could easily be the way that we want to go with it, and and it's most, I like to feel superior to people, right? So right, how can I hear uh, about uh, Jesus' death and resurrection every single uh, uh, Sunday at church and still forget about it uh, the moment I walk out the door? Do you find forget about it? Because like I, I know it's true. Well, I yeah, I know that it's true, and I guess this is a little bit different uh, with how the uh, the apostles are viewing it here because they what. What is being said is just so mind-boggling to them. I, I, I think their their brains are just shut off to it. It would almost appear as if uh, uh, the Lord hasn't yet opened their eyes to this, which is what we see not so much in Mark's gospel, but in, uh, in Matthew's and I think John's as well, uh, where uh, after his resurrection, he appears to them, and then he opens up the fullness of Scripture and opens up of, hey, Remember when I said all of these things before, uh, it literally happened and it literally came true. And this is the whole purpose of it. But for them, uh, and we've talked about this before with the the first and the second passion uh, uh, prediction from Jesus or narratives from Jesus, is uh, they have no clue uh, what it means to be uh, a Messiah. Right. And uh, this is what uh, I, I get to preach on tomorrow for the uh, close of the divine service is Jesus second. Uh, passion prediction where he asks uh, uh, the disciples who who uh, who do people say that I am and uh, they give uh, all these uh, answers that everybody else has that are wrong and then Peter stands up and says you're the Christ and he says yes absolutely now don't tell anybody right and it's not because he wants to really keep this a secret but it's because uh, clearly the disciples still don't understand what it means for Jesus to be the Christ and we see that uh, playing out later on when when Peter basically says, uh, no, Jesus, uh, you're foolish. Don't go to the cross. That's silly. I actually don't know if this is like the right place to sort of insert ourselves into the feet of the the, um, the Blessed Twelve here. Because you, you mentioned something that, that kind of sticks with me, that, that we hear that Jesus died and rose for us every single Sunday in church and go out and immediately forget about it. And it, it's not that like we cease to remember that he is the Messiah who died and rose, but rather like there's a, a disconnect between faith and, and common sense that every single Christian has, not just once, like once right. I was blind and now I see, but all the time. Uh, because like all the time... I know that sin breaks stuff and 
like you know that's going to go poorly but but still do it and and even just the the idea of grace too that that you you can be loved in in such a, a profound way as to die for you um it, it's it's one thing to sort of know it but it's another thing to sort of actually wrestle with it the the knowledge of it is not necessarily the same thing as a heartfelt trust either. no and the 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 theologians will speak about it uh in in the objective sense uh right so the objective uh reality of of the gospel and and we leaving church on sundays we uh, objectively understand about the cross and the empty tomb it's the subjective and not subjective in regards to we all get to make our own decisions about what this means to us but subjective as in personal right and so i think when when we walk out and we forget about the cross or we forget about the empty tomb it's in the subjective sense, not that the, uh, our minds just get erased like in Men in Black, right? That we don't remember what happened. Uh, that's a dated, dated reference that nobody understands. Um, but they're it, like, but there's like so many of them. Do they still like zappy zap people in the new? I one? don't know. I don't. I haven't seen the new one. The, I refuse. The old one is the right one. Right. Right. And the first. That's it. No, that's. Right. So, uh, uh, it's like no, our but, podcast, the first season and everything after that. Yeah, the first season is awful. Don't see that. Um, <laughs> they get. Worse, they though. get worse. So, um, there's that. No, but this uh, again, it's this subjective sense uh, of uh, we walk out, and then sin, suffering, uh, uh, the world around us, Satan, uh, they they come crashing down. A reality uh, of what we uh, just understood within the confines of of the church uh, is just shattered again within moments, sometimes even. Um, and subjectively speaking, we forget about what the cross is for us. And that's just the way that uh, we understand uh, uh, temptation uh, as, as we confess it in, in the Lord's Prayer. The way in which Satan will tempt us is his primary uh, way to do this is, is to what? The gospel is e either A, not true, or B, not for you. Right. Right. So um, can I both make a way too big a deal about this and also try and downplay it just a At little bit? At the same time. I, yeah, it's fun to sort of talk out of both sides of your mouth with this. Um, so on one hand, like we don't want to go so far as to say like because you struggle to fully realize the uh, the magnitude of the gospel for you at any given moment because you're not in church. Like, so if like I died 20 minutes after church, am I out? Like you need to go while somebody is actively preaching to you. I mean, that's ideal. I would like to go while somebody's preaching the gospel to me. Like I, I would would like to go with the 23rd psalm in my ear with a hymn in my ear um yeah which is why it's great that pastors can go to hospice places and hospitals and, why we do it right exactly. yeah um but but i also sort of want to reckon with the, the idea that um maybe we make too big a deal about this like it, it, it's not sort of how much you are feeling jesus in your heart or how how sort of secure you feel about your faith uh that that is salvific but but rather, did Jesus die and rise? Are you baptized? And and not how do you feel about being baptized? Right, and we're gonna we're gonna get to this uh, at the end. Yeah, right. Uh, at the end of Mark chapter ten <laughs> with blind Bartimaeus. Um. Uh. But also we hear it uh, earlier on. Uh. With uh. With the woman who uh. Whose uh, faith heals her daughter type thing. Right. right. Um. And and, and what I that you have read that far. Yeah. Good. Um, and what and what that actually does uh, then mean? It's it, it's it's part of this subjective faith, but it's 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 this faith for me. And again, it, it's not faith as the object, but it's the object of the faith, mm -hmm. right? Uh, it's what faith grasps, it, 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 what it believes in, and and holds fast to, even when we doubt. Which is, of course, Christ crucified and and all that he's done for us. Right. So to take the example by which we were given uh, the first Men in Black movie, it's the tiny little gun that Will Smith has that that throws him bodily into the car I, I you're gonna have to you're gonna have to i want to <laughs> so you, you used to banter with me i had it I, it was so he had the the tiny little gun no, and he I understand was really the gun. i don't about understand it. what you're and trying to everybody sort of wants your faith ah, to be this right, big right. swelling magnitude thing so we're at a higher things conference and the, the organ uh we we sang um we, we sang the church is one foundation today and i cried like I, I flat cried because the way that that they, the kids sang at me and the way that the organ played for me, um, it was moving. Right. Um, and, and it was something that that actually shook me. And in that moment, like there was no question. It didn't feel like too much of a symbol at so, that. Particular so what you're saying moment. is, is, is the, 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 the chapel experience here is like Tommy it, Lee. Yes, it feels. Yeah. Gone and like you put on full. Right. And, blow. <clears throat> and, and most of the time I'm walking around and, and I, a little I pea shooter of Will Smith and right. Man Black. I get it. But, the, the but that's all that matters. Right. Yeah. Um, and, and so this is a horrible example, but I just like <laughs> really old pop culture with you. Uh, I was hoping you would do more. That's not really just, your I'm bag. I'm just going to let you. 
dangle here. Yep. <laughs> yeah. I appreciate you. Um, so no, but, but we want to sort of go with this based on not, did the disciples perfectly understand Were they in this moment saved, even though they didn't understand it? That's the question I have. No, absolutely. How do you know? <clears throat> absolutely. Um, because Christ called them, right? It's, it's outside of them. It's, it's what Christ has done for them. This is actually the, the place where we really want to go though. What does Jesus say about them? And, and that's the thing that, that we're going to hang on to. What does Jesus say about, about you? What does Jesus say about me? Um, because if you want to sort of measure how much do I trust Jesus, it's always a shaky thing, both in how well I feel it and how well I understand it. Uh, but at the same time, this is also where the devil pushes. And so we don't want to completely downplay it either. We, we sort of want to reckon with the, the idea that um, if the, the faith is weak, if you sort of feel ambivalent about it, this is actually a place where the devil will say, pay less attention to it. Don't lean into it. And, and that will eventually lead to, to that full divorce. Yeah. No, absolutely. No, it's beautiful. Um, <clears throat> just one, one small thing again, and, and <clears throat> this was from, you know, reading and studying, not that I got this by myself, <clears throat> the three different, uh, passion, uh, predictions that we have from, uh, uh, Jesus, uh, in, in the book of Mark, it's, it's, and I don't even know exactly where to go with this, but it is interesting that they have small distinctions that, they don't contradict each other, but Jesus' first passion narrative is going to be uh, uh, in the land of the Gentiles. And he, he focuses a lot about the Jewish authorities and what they're going to do in time and space. And then the next passion uh, 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 narrative is when he's in uh, Judea. And then his focus is on the Gentile uh, authorities and what they're going to do to bring about this uh, this uh, in in the fullness of time and space, uh, salvation comes, and then this one is on the way, right? So it's on the road to, on the way to Jerusalem, and it just speaks about the fullness of it, right? It, it, it's the it's the most detailed of Jesus' thing. It's it, these are all the things that that will happen, that must take place, right? It's just a it, almost a statement of fact that this is going to happen, um, and it it always had to be. It's not just uh, uh, Jesus uh, uh, knows this in the future sort of thing, uh, but it's uh, no. Uh, since uh, Genesis 3.15, uh, this, this, was, this was laid out. Right. And, and there you get to sort of see God is not sort of predicting the future, but he's enacting it. Right. And, and that's something that we don't get to do. So God's word is, is both descriptive and prescriptive at the same time. We can describe things, but we can't sort of speak them into existence. We, we talk about this. The world likes to, you know, manifest things. Um, and so they'll, they'll, they'll say if you if you manifest good your way, you, you speak good, you think good thoughts and then good will come to right. you out into the universe. And it it's, comes back. It's beautifully um, pagan. Pagan. Yeah, it's, right. it's like at least a spade's a spade at this right. particular point in time. They're actually saying, if I could be like God, I would talk and things would be light and it would be good. Right, right. And 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 uh, our general culture even uses pagan words like uh, karma. Yeah. Right. It's just come into the natural vernacular that maybe even you or your your, your friends have used. Right. Mm -hmm. And yeah, it's it's just uh, completely pagan. Uh, uh, completely against the way in which our Lord speaks about this. Yeah, everyone's dumb but us. Um, because here, what we. <laughs> No. no, but this is exactly <laughs> it. Uh, I still look at this and, and I, I dive into the scriptures and I wonder what it would be like to live back then. Uh, and, and I'll dive into the scripture and I'll be like, so yeah, but what does this mean about tomorrow? Because I know one day I'll die and go to heaven, but like there's a long way between heaven and here um, to, to quote some uh, television show. But um, I I at the same time, if God's word is both prescriptive and descriptive, when he says you are baptized i baptize you in the name of the father and of the son and of the holy spirit that is for genesis 3 the same salvation given to adam and eve right. is is now yours that is for today in this moment that is for next tuesday should the lord not come back and that is finally at last for the resurrection because when he predicts his death and resurrection it's not just like i am predicting that this will happen but rather i spoke a long time ago about this so how can it be anything but before the foundation of the world the lamb was slain before he ever right. said let there be light the lamb was slain yeah and uh, we've talked about this before, and I don't know how much we want to uh, keep on this small little section when we're trying to get through the entirety of the rest of this chapter. Oops. But it, it, but it is this: uh, <clears throat> Christ wins salvation uh, at the cross, which is what He speaks of. Right. Um, but you receive that where, right, in time and space, exactly where you're at. Mm -hmm. You are, and and for the theme of this whole conference, right? Who am I? I am, I am a baptized Christian. I am, I'm one whom Christ died for and then gives me that death and resurrection here in time and space washes me clean sure uh so you want to keep going or is like 
Sure. The horse is dead. We can keep beating it, but like... Let's do it. All right. Uh, so let's keep going then. Uh, picking back up at verse 35, James and John, the sons of Zebedee, came up to Jesus and said to him, Teacher, we want you to do for us whatever we ask of you. And he said to them, What do you want me to do? And they said to him, Grant us to sit, one at your right hand and one at your left in your glory. And Jesus said to them, You do not know what you are asking. Are you able to drink the cup that I am to drink or to be baptized with the baptism which I am baptized? And they said to him, We are able. And Jesus said to them, The cup that I drink, you will drink. And with the baptism of which I am baptized, you will be baptized. But to sit at my right hand or my left is not mine to grant, but it is for those to whom it has been prepared. And when the ten heard it, they began to be indignant at James and John. And Jesus called them to him and said to them, You know that those who are considered rulers of the Gentiles lord it over them, and their great ones exercise authority over them. But it shall not be so among you. But whoever would be great among you must be your servant, and whoever would be first among you must be the slave of all. For even the Son of Man came not to be served, but to serve, and to give his life as a ransom for many. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. There is so much in that. There is. I like the Luke version a little bit better because the Sons of Thunder send their mom to like go ask Jesus for this. It's just it's just the power move to go ask your mom to do stuff for you. Still. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah but, there's but so much more. respect that comes with that. <laughs> <laughs> Um, but I, I think, uh, for me at least, this is a, this whole section just begs to talk about the theology of the cross and the theology of glory. I don't know. No, I think I think you're absolutely right. <clears throat> and we give uh, uh, James and John a hard time as 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 if they're coming uh, asking Jesus just an audacious question, like whatever we want, just give to us, right? Um, <clears throat> and I'm not sure if that's the right way to go about it. Uh, Mark doesn't have this this section in there. I think Matthew does though. Uh, where uh, Jesus before this um, uh, episode here uh, does talk about um, uh, uh, ask whatever you would have in my name and 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 it shall be yours right seek and you shall find knock and the door will be open um, so I want a pony and it doesn't work that way you don't get a pony you're a grown man right so, nobody's gonna give you a pony that's silly that's why <laughs> <laughs> um, but so so the fact that that uh, James and John are coming here asking this, I, I, I think they have the Well, I, I heard my Lord actually say this uh, to me. So it's not an audacious thing. You and your best construction in the scriptures. Yeah, I'm, tr- I'm trying to give them a, a good uh, a good talk. No, here. let's but, go. Let's go. But um, no, the, the problem again, then, is 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 their misunderstanding of what it is that Jesus is 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 saying. When it says "ask uh, whatever you would have in, in my father's name," right? I'm like paraphrasing pony. that, right? Like pony in my father's name. Except that's not how it is, right? Uh, it's it's the things of the it's the things of the Lord's prayer. It's the way in which our Lord has actually taught us to pray. Mm-hmm. Ask these things that are that that your heavenly Father would have uh, uh, for you and would uh, give to you and desires to, not just because uh, uh, it's his prerogative, but because he knows that this is best for you. So you ask these things in the Father's name and they shall be yours. Well, I think James and John have the misunderstanding, right? They're asking for the pony, right? That's what they want. They want this, uh, uh, whatever I want to give it to me right here and now. And for them, it's this theology of, of glory, which theologians will speak about. But that goes with the whole misunderstanding of of who Jesus is that we get throughout the entirety of of Mark uh, up until uh, at the, the the resurrection and and for Mark it kind of seems a little ambiguous there uh, too with the the short ending versus the long but uh, we we have this complete misunderstanding and we just saw it with the uh, uh, Jesus foretells his his death and resurrection for the third time he's talking about the theology of the cross over and over and over and over again and then the next thing that we hear is disciples, blessed apostles, as you said, coming with this theology of glory in mind, a completely different understanding, and says, uh, yeah, give us whatever we want. And Jesus says, okay, what is it? And and what do they ask for? A pony. Well. Yes. <laughs> so this is this is actually a really important thing, because the theology of glory and the theology of cross, uh, they're, they're questions about where to find God, and especially where to find God working. So if you have a theology of glory, you can tell you're really close to God if something really cool is happening. Like if something like, if there's like explosions going on and people are like walking away slowly behind them and the bad guys just got, right. yeah. So that's a theology of glory. So that the, the sons of thunder, um, which is a theology of glory kind of name, they walk up to Jesus and like at the coolest, bestest miracle that you have, we want to be right there. And they're thinking like, I'm going to call down fire on, on Pilate. I'm going to, I'm going to, 
reheadify John the Baptist, and then he's going to get a pony that he's going to ride through with a, a, a sword and cut off Herod's head, uh, and the the sword will be on fire. That looks so silly on a pony. It'd be great. <laughs> they were shorter back then, so it wouldn't. They're all not like. Okay. They're all not like six Look, foot twenty four. It'd be like, like a you. hobbit riding one of their right. Their so ponies. it's still okay. Right. It looks. It looks. Yeah. Yeah. I've also. Uh, I've decided that there's no such thing as six feet tall. Yeah. Yeah. Everybody is five feet and then just extra inches, and so you are five foot twenty two. Nice. Um, that works. If that makes me feel better about That'll being work. me. So can we do that, please? Yeah, just yep, going. That works. Right. Um, so, because this is my theology of glory, I, I need I need some things that that are going to sort of make me feel more powerful. Right. And and more specifically, I mean, they again, Jesus just said, "I'm I'm going to the cross. I'm going to suffer many things. I'm going to die at the hands of, of of sinners." That sounds awful. It sounds horrible. And they say, and and their understanding of Messiah is not that, even though Jesus just said that. They say, "Oh yeah, yeah, yeah that's great." That's Jesus. fine, but uh, but in your glory, right? When you come and you and when you're really going to do stuff, right? I want to be there, and I want to be at your right and your left. And again, it's like we said, it's this complete misunderstanding of of this glory. So let me ask you then, and I, I think it's pretty explicit. Um, where is this glory that we find? It, this is actually the theology of the cross. Right. Um, this is, well, th there was a, a time when Jesus was brought into his glory. The hour in which the Son of Man was glorified was when he died on the cross. And there were people actually designated for his left and his right. And Jesus even warns them, like, you're, you're going to have that death too. That you're going to be martyred too. You're going to be baptized with that kind of baptism too, but not yet. Uh, and they don't want to see it. And this is why it really, really matters. Because if you expect to call or find God only working in, in the things that men would call glorious instead of the things that God would, uh, you end up calling good evil and evil good. Right. All the time. And that, that means not only will you, will you uh, start to despise the good gifts of God, because like the worst thing in the world about a religion of the cross is a God who would die for sinners to save them from uh, the things that they do to themselves. Um, and the best things that uh, uh, this, this kind of religion could do would be to kill people that you don't like. Right. Yeah, and mm -hmm. then and then give me uh, crowns and ponies and That's castles to sit in. Right. But with castles and right. ponies, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, and so we we have to reckon with this theology of the cross and the theology of glory a lot, because old Adam, that that sinner inside of me, is desperate to find a God who works inside of the theology of glory. And and so I can I can very much relate to the sons of thunder here, even though I'm a lot more awkward than them. Well, and and with with James and and John here, right? Uh, when Jesus says, "Are you going to be able to?" Uh, 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 be baptized with the baptism that I, 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 I'm going to undergo. Can you drink the same cup? And they say yes. And, and he kind of says, well, yes, you will, but, but not exactly not in the same way, right? Because my baptism is my death. And, and the cup that I'm speaking about is the full wrath of God that's going to be uh, poured out on me, which is why he prays in the Garden of Gethsemane, right? If, if uh, uh, this cup can pass from me, right, let it. Right. Right. Because in his full humanity, uh, he, he doesn't want to have to receive this this full wrath from God. Um, and so it's not as if they're going to drink the exact same thing, i.e. Uh, the purpose of why Jesus is going to the cross for mm. the salvation of sinners. Um, but because now they're apostles, because uh, a, a student is above is not above his master sort of thing, they're going to be receiving uh, this cross as well. They're going to be receiving this suffering, which is. Again, the second part of, of uh, uh, the sermon text that I actually don't get to in the sermon, um, but it's the, the, the take up your cross and follow me sort yes. of stuff, right? It, it, we always think that it is this uh, uh, bad things are going to happen um, just because bad things happen. And while that might be true in this fallen world, that's not the crosses that we're, that we're dealing with here, that what Jesus is saying here. The, the crosses that we're dealing with is is the suffering that we have to uh, suffer uh, a for the good of our neighbor b because of uh, uh, our our uh, unity with Christ and 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 what that brings so for James and John it is uh, yeah you're going to be martyred for the sake of the gospel it's it's going to happen it is it is it's it it is coming um, I can't really say that in those words for you right now because you can't you can't bear to hear them. Um, Jesus speaks this way in, uh, in the gospel of, uh, uh, John a little bit more specifically where, uh, it's, it's on, uh, uh, Monday, Thursday, uh, and he just has this huge diatribe of sending the Holy spirit and all this sort of stuff. And he's saying, there's so much that I need to tell you guys, but you can't bear to hear it right now. Mm. Right. If I told you, uh, you would be overcome with grief and your head would explode. It just can't happen yet, but don't worry. 
I'm going to the cross. I will be raised again. I will send the Holy Spirit. And then things are going to make a little bit more sense. Right. 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 Good. Okay. Okay. Should we go? Are we going to go on? Did you ha- did you have anything I, else? I, I want to finish the 10th chapter. This okay. is like the 10th well, episode. How, far, how long have we been sitting here Le, the, and torturing these people? And they came to Jericho, and as he, being Jesus, was leaving Jericho with his disciples in a great crowd, Bartimaeus, a blind beggar, the son of Timaeus, was sitting by the roadside. And when he heard it, it was uh, Jesus of Nazareth. He began to cry out and say, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. And many rebuked him, telling him to be silent. But he cried out all the more, son of David, have mercy on me. And Jesus stopped and said, call him. And they called the blind man, saying to him, Take heart, get up, he is calling you. And throwing off his cloak, he sprang up and came to Jesus. And Jesus said to him, What do you want me to do for you? And the blind man said to him, Rabbi, let me recover my sight. And Jesus said to him, Go your way, your faith has made you well. And immediately he recovered his sight, and he followed him on the way. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. All right. We're doing it. Yeah, so what do you have to say about the son of Timaeus? I think that it's mean that Jesus asked the very obviously blind guy what he wanted to be done for him. Like, honestly. Okay, why, before I go into to my thing? <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I actually, this is a thing that I've, I've wrestled with. Like, this is a God who supposedly knows even our, our thoughts. He has numbered the hairs on our head. And like the blind guy, first they called the blind guy over to him. Like, he's, he's blind, not deaf. He, he heard it. Right. But um, like this is a humiliating thing at this point in time. He's a blind beggar. He's he's already the lowest of the low. And he finally gets to be brought up. And instead of Jesus, who knows, like, oh, hey, blind guy can give sight, have mercy, go. He, he says, what do you want me to do for you? And he actually makes him say it out loud. Um, the, the ways that God would sort of draw the confession out um, are, are they hurt my feelings. And I think that it's a good gift. OK. No, I, I like that, and I could maybe even agree with it. That's um, <laughs> wildly shocking. <laughs> maybe. Um, but I, I, I like how this is I, – I like how Mark is actually laying all of this out, right? Uh, certainly everything that's happening here actually did happen in time and space, and, and it is a, a historical narrative. Do you um, stop talking about mine to talk about yours? No, no, no. Okay, I'm go. going to get there. Um, uh, maybe. Um, it's, I think it's, so. a, it's a historical narrative that happens. Um, uh, and yet Mark is, and we've talked about this in previous, uh, uh, um, episodes, Mark is, is crafting this in such a way because he wants to get across certain theological truths, right? It's not just a history book that's happening. Right. And so uh, it's not as if uh, necessarily uh, these three things that we talked about today happened. Uh, uh, boom, boom, boom. Right. It's not that sort of thing. Mm-hmm. Um, so we've got uh, Jesus foretelling his death, saying, uh, uh, "Glory of uh, the my glory comes in the cross. Theology of the cross. Theology of the cross. Theology of the cross. The people who should understand it don't. Still, they've been told to be silent before. Uh, 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 Jesus has to uh, reiterate that again for them with with Peter and uh, sorry with James and John here, um, and they're asking for the uh, theology of glory. Just give me whatever I want. I want to stand, sit at your right and left. And here we've got." Uh, perhaps the way in which uh, the sinner underneath the cross should go to his Lord in every uh, in every respect in his suffering, and and just listen to how he goes. It it isn't with I've got the thing that I want, and uh, that's the only thing that I want from you, and you must give that to me, Lord. But how does he actually call out to his Lord? Have mercy. It's on me. just have mercy. It's the best prayer. Right. So then why does he have to say specifically? I don't know. I, I'm, I'm not even sure. Is that what Bartimaeus is asking for when he's calling out for mercy? One would guess. <laughs> One would guess. Perhaps. I don't, I, I, I don't know so if like, I, I get that there. there's more. No, I get that there's more. And, and so like a best construction reading of the scriptures, which you're so good at, and 
and you're so good at it. like that's my best construction um it is that he, he also recognizes his great as his, the magnitude of his sin uh and and that uh, the wage of the sin is death that the the blindness that he wrestles with is not just a, a punishment for his sin but actually for adam's and so if there were not to be a savior that was promised all the way back then then he would be lost and so knowing full well who this is he cries out for mercy in the broadest of contexts. well absolutely sure, but... no I, th- I and not just for sure but i i really think that's where we got to land on this because i don't because you're wrong they, that's fine it's <laughs> fine <laughs> um but it's the way in which he addresses jesus right it is right. this son of david it, no, it is, is this right. messiah language mm-hmm. that he does um and i think mark is 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 really trying to set this up of of, of showing us uh, uh, the theology of the cross versus the, the theology of glory. And whether this happened one right after another, chronologically speaking, or this is just how Mark is trying to show us this theological truth, he's putting this dichotomy between those who would love the theology of glory and just look at Jesus as this uh, magic giver and this guy who just uh, uh, reaches into his bag uh, like the uh, 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 the Wizard of Oz, right, and says, here, here what... But instead, it is... Uh, it's it, it's the, the the one who's come to actually be the Messiah, and what does that mean? And so blind Bartimaeus, uh, in his blindness, uh, at least in the way in which Mark is portraying it, and I think it's the right way, he's, he, is, he is just looking for Jesus to be the Messiah. That's it. Mm-hmm. Be the Messiah. Have mercy on me. I am a poor, blind beggar who deserves absolutely nothing, and all I'm doing is calling out for mercy. And everybody else with the theology of glory is just like, shut up, shut up. That's not for you. You don't get that. Be quiet. And Jesus here, I think, in in order to show the theology of the cross even more so, it, it, it just goes uh, back to, and I don't can't remember if we did this with Mark, but it's that that uh, miracle where uh, the the paralytic is let down through the roof, mm-hmm. and Jesus says, "Your sins are forgiven," and like that's all that he's going right. to say, right? Um, but then he that's says, not to, "Why we're here?" Right? Yeah. Right. But to show that the Son of Man has the authority to forgive sins, take up your mat and walk. For sure. Um. The the curia is a blessing and that well, like what does it not address and and there it, it becomes a wonderful prayer for the christian but i also think that there is such a thing as a danger of jesus in general um the idea that that jesus is just he's forming the, the broadest of swath of things because what it allows me to do because i am a worse construction kind of guy is that i will take the one thing i don't actually want him to have and i'll tuck it away i'll take the one sin i actually really want to hang on to and i'll still sort of hold on to it and i'll say i'm so glad jesus that you saved me while i keep this addiction hidden quietly behind me while i keep this this idol that i am not willing to part with quieted behind me and so when jesus uh has this way then of of making you talk about the things that you don't want to talk about it's so that he can give you something better um and, and so the well, you're, you're, you're absolutely right. Um, at the same time, I, I do believe that uh, the devil would use the Kyrie against the Christian to allow him to sort of tuck away the things he doesn't want mercy for. Um, so Jesus has mercy in the broadest of swaths. He, he is not simply there to cure the blindness, but he's also going to make you talk about the things that are wrong so that he can tell you not just your sins are forgiven, but that sin is forgiven. And to me, that that's a wildly different thing, especially in sort of the day-to-day practice of the Christian, because I can stand there in Sunday morning in church and say, ah, I, poor, miserable sinner, confess unto you all my sin. The same monotone voice as everybody right. else. And what I really mean is the three things that I sort of feel bad about. But private confession is actually sometimes a gift because if, yeah. if it has bothered you enough that you're actually willing to say, it's Tuesday and I cannot, I cannot carry this until Sunday. Not, not because like I, I need to get my Jesus points, but just my conscience is so burdened that I, I cannot carry this until Sunday morning. And that's, that's really all private confession is, right? Like Jesus doesn't work an hour a week. Um, right. it, it's instead, if you have a, a burden anytime, your pastor is so excited to forgive you your sins. But there's this option in the liturgy for it. You don't have to, but you may actually say and what troubles me particularly is right. um the law will bring it out to your conscience regardless but right. the, the law sort of unburies the one thing we want to hide so that jesus can forgive but it. you can yeah you can speak that out loud right <clears throat> and uh, to take your your theological point which i'm not sure we can shoehorn here but we will but um we will <laughs> Uh, but to take that at, uh, absolutely uh, uh, truthful theological point in regards to that, uh, bringing this out and extrapolating it into confession, uh, absolution, whether it's corporate or, or individual, that is the gift that we, uh, we get to do. That is the gift that your pastor gets to do, and it's to unburden consciences. And we can even take that e- even further 
It's the way in which we can actually hear those sins forgiven in time and space where maybe it's the Tuesday that I sinned against my wife and I can't just jump in the car and run down and talk to my pastor about it because it's uh, 930 at night. Uh, and he's really not going to be the very happy with me text calling him. up about that. Text him. Well, I could text him, or but, I could just go to my wife. Yeah. Right. I mean, the one that I actually sinned against, and I and, and I can confess this sin to her, and I can hear the absolution from my Lord from her as well, because I sinned against her. And your wife, who you sinned against, can forgive you for sinning against her. Absolutely. Right. Right. The other place, though, that I was going to go, um, as so that it wouldn't just be shoehorning, would okay. be to talk about prayer. Uh, because you're actually called then to pray for the very specific things. The Kyrie, Lord have mercy, is a beautiful prayer. It's the very first prayer I taught my kids, because uh, it's short. Um, but it's also a, a place where there are times when you cannot think of anything else, because that's all that's left. And it's Jesus saying, what do you want me to do for you? And you're allowed to pray for that too, right? No, that, and that's beautiful. And I think maybe maybe that's that's the the best way to to do this as well to to say that this is where blind Bartimaeus is finding himself that he doesn't mm. have any other words. It's uh, I'm a I'm a poor miserable sinner. I'm a blind beggar uh, who everybody just my sight. everybody just walks past me. Uh, the only thing that I can think of saying is Lord have mercy. Mm. And then once we pray that prayer. Uh, our, our Lord does actually want to hear about the specifics. Yeah. Like what, what troubles you the most? Right. Not I to saw. make you feel worse about saying it, but so that he can actually address it in mercy because it feels awful to say it out loud, right. but it feels wonderful. Like just the greatest comfort to know that Jesus cares so much about that. Not just that like maybe he'll give you the thing right, right now, like a vending machine, but rather Jesus loves you so much that he hated what was wrong so much that he came down into this world to die, to rise, to make sure that you would not be burdened with it to, to, to the grave and forever. To, to make sure that that uh, it would not define you, but your baptism would define you and the resurrection would free you from it so that maybe you will be free from it in this life. But regardless, you won't have to measure anything that's wrong against anything other than did Jesus conquer death and there find great hope. Yeah. All right. You convinced me. Yeah. You got it. Well done. Yeah. Hey. We did it. We chapter. did it. Next time, triumphal entry. Yeah. In all of his glory. On a pony. <laughs> On a pony. <laughs> we, we out. You are listening to a Higher Things production. Higher Things is a 501c3 nonprofit organization whose mission is to make the gifts of Christ Jesus known to youth and young adults through gospel rich content like you are about to hear. Consider joining our supporters who make this ministry possible by donating at higherthings.org slash giving or by clicking the link in the show notes. And now Higher Things presents The Uncultured Saints with Pastors Eli Leedsow and Harrison Goodman.